Goedemorgen allemaal, mijn naam is Elsje en ik kom van Lewubu af, waar ons boer bij Maluma boerderij en waar ons ook die centrum voor uitnemendheid gestig het. Today I'm going to tell you more about sustainable stink bug management and control. The macadamia industry is growing fast. This means that there's more hectares planted, there's new plantings in many new areas, and there's also more hectares of the same thing, which we call a monoculture. Monoculture mean, means that there's more food available for stink bugs, and this leads to higher disease and pest pressure in a certain area. This makes it so important that what you do to control your pests and your disease are effective. The common problems that we are facing in the macadamia industry is that we're not calculating our losses accurately. When you have an accurate estimate of your stink bug damage, then you make different decisions from a farmer who didn't actually know how much he is losing. When we're dealing with a monoculture, like I just said, it holds the implication that we've got higher pest pressure. High stink bug numbers as a result of microclimate in some areas, resistance due to the ineffective control or overuse of chemicals, and then we've got the problem of calendar sprays. In itself, trees are too high and dense, we cannot reach the target, the target meaning in this presentation stink bugs, and then we have repercussion pests as a result of stink bug control. I'm showing you a picture of the two spotted stink bugs. This picture is a picture of the, the top and the bottom side of a male stink bug. And here you see a long mouth. This stink bug is one of the major pests in the macadamia orchards. Jean Winter from Source has done brilliant work in estimating the losses due to stink bugs. This is so important. Barry Christie from Green Farms is doing this for his farmers. He's estimating exactly how much money you are losing. When we're looking at the overall losses to the industry, we know that stink bugs contribute to most of our unsound kernel. Early stink bug and late stink bug make up total stink bug damage. And for this talk, I'll be referring to total stink bug damage that includes late and early stink bug damage. Now, what is early stink bug damage? Early stink bug damage is damage that happened long ago or longer ago when the oil content of the macadamia was lower. Late stink bug damage is ha damage that's, that happened more recently or when the oil content was higher. The economic loss of stink bugs to the industry is estimated at around 8,275 rand per hectare per season. I show you photos of early stink bug damage. Georgina Kilner is a student who did brilliant work in Malawi. And starting from the beginning, um, she studied the biology of the two spotted stink bug. Georgina showed that the stink bug life cycle lasts about a month. And this is why calendar sprays sometimes works. Georgina also showed that the damage on the kernel could be caused by second instar nymphs that were only five days old. Light stink bug damage, like I said, is damage that happened more recently. So it's damage that happens when the husks are already thick and the shell are already hardened and the oil content of your crop is already much higher, your crop is reaching maturity. Green stink bugs also form part of the stink bug complex that causes damage. This is a photo that Dr. Kuestein took in his orchards where there's diversity in the orchards. He's planted sun hennep and also left the natural vegetation in the orchards. What his work has shown was that total stink bug damage was significantly lower where there was diversity and trap crops in the orchards. If you look at the dark blue bars, the, the result shows that there are significantly less stink bug damage. The edge effect was quantified by Dr. Valerie Linden and the team of Dr. Peter Taylor. And there they showed also nearer the edge of the orchard. When it was natural, there were more pollinators, there were more parasitoids, and there were more predators. Predators are, for example, bats. Okay, when you apply something, you have to know that 
in your application of a control program, you have to bear in mind that this system is a whole integrated system that contributes to insect pressure due to your soil health, the tree health, and the disease and the pest pressure. So you have to monitor, then apply control and monitor again. Make sure what you've applied in controlling your pest was successful. You have to apply chemicals in combination with biology. So bats and birds are known as ecosystem service providers. Another biological component that we've got and can use is endopathogenic fungi. These are, for example, Bacillus subtilis and Bavaria bassiana. Bats and birds, when excluded, have resulted to losses over 65,000 rand per hectare per season. When monkeys were in the orchards, they contributed to about 21,600 rand per hectare per season. This is due to a crop raiding effect. We have to monitor. When we go out into the orchards and we use different types of control, I've mentioned biological control, I've mentioned chemical control, and I want to mention mechanical control, physically doing something, then we can achieve success and be sustainable in it. I'm showing you a picture of someone observing a net that was placed around the tree. These nets has proven successful in monitoring for stink bugs. If we multiplied what we found in the nets by 17, we found the same results as our knockdown scouts. We found more than 200 dead stink bugs in these nets. We found more than 57 dead nymphs in these nets. You have to apply something that is physical as well, or do something that is physical, along with your biological and chemical control. We have trained people in pruning. Pruning is a must do. When you open your tree canopies, you get better spray penetration so that you get more effective control. I've received a classic spray program that I want to show you as an example. This spray program consists of many different IRAC groups. We like programs that consist of many different IRAC groups. IRAC groupings can be a grouping 1A, 3A, 4A, 9B, and 28. So in this example, Pyronex is sprayed, and this is an organic, organophosphate in the beginning of a season, followed by cheese, and then you, you have broadband, which is Bavaria bassiana, which is a brilliant way to include a biological into a spray program. The problem that we've got is that we have to apply IRA groupings toward the end of the season with lower withholding period. We only have a few chemicals that we can use toward crop maturity and harvesting with low um, withholding periods. So let me explain withholding periods and MRLs a little bit. We've got MRL on the one side, which is governed by the Department of Health, and then we've got an environmental impact on the other hand, which is the responsibility of the farmer. Yeah. So whatever you as a farmer decide to spray, you have to make sure that, that you adhere to a minimum residue limit and that you also don't harm the environment in what you are doing. We do apply a lot of shorter withholding period products, for example, cypermethrins. And we do find that stink bugs don't necessarily die when we apply these at the end of the season. It's also at the end of the season when we find most stink bugs. So yeah, in a video, I'm just showing you some stink bug survival after spraying for, con for controlling them. So if I mention chemicals, I have to also talk about the effects of chemicals on your pollinators, parasitoids, and predators. Pollinators, for example, honeybees, are influenced by what you do as a farmer, and you have to take responsibility for what you do, and like I said, the environmental impact of what you are doing. First, it's important to note that there are specific residue limits that affect specific stages or specific species of pests, 
And over here, I want to highlight a 0 0.03 milligrams per kilogram or part per million. That will be a sublethal effect on honeybee larval development. And 0 0.07, that is toxic to stink bug nymphs found in northern USA. So what we found is in a low clay or a high clay situation, there were different effects. Low clay, clay situation where we've applied imidacloprid according to the label, we had no stink bug control after three months of application. We repelled the honeybees. We killed the bees for, for eight months. We had no significant stink bug control and the application resulted in us exceeding the MRL for Taiwan, Vietnam, and Codex in general. The hives were significantly lighter at the treatment in comparison to the control. In the high clay co content, we did find that we killed the bees up to 11 months after application. There were significant stink bug control, but we did also exceed the MRLs, both for the USA, EU harmonized, and Codex, so forth. This is an example of a letter we received early last year where work has been done to prove that a specific product is safe to use for your uh, beneficial insects, which then includes predators and pollinators, green lacewings, for example, predatory wasps, ladybirds, and also honeybees. So just to recap, I've mentioned that we're dealing with a monoculture. This re leads to a lot of food and higher pest pressures. We have to make sure that our pest control is accurate and it was effective. This is the only way to farm sustainably. In the generalized phenology of the macadamia throughout the season, you have to consider the different pests that you are dealing with. So you have to think about thrips when you are planning your control strategy. You have to think about nut borer. You have to think about short mouth, medium mouth, and long mouth stink bugs. Don't forget the coconut bug. It's a medium mouth stink bug that causes significant damage in macadamia kernel. Use the scouting guides. Andrew Sheard and his team at Myomax presented a beautiful scouting guide for you, for you as a growers to use in the field. Make sure you know your enemy. Scout for stink bug damage as well. Don't just scout for the bugs themselves. This is a graph of the, of the scouting records over time. And what really stood out to me was the fact that when our crop started reaching maturity, our stink bug numbers were also through the roof. Look at the 2019 figure. 2019, beginning of the season, disaster was happening. And that was an, a, a result of ineffective spraying. Your scouting can really tell you a lot of what is going on and then indirectly about what you're going to be finding toward the, the end of the season when you got all your results back. Use information. Use information to make better decisions. A map of NDVI, which is your natural digital vegetation index, will show the stressed parts in your orchards or stressed orchards. These orchards would ideally be scouted more regularly. We know that stressed trees are more susceptible to pest and disease damage. Use moisture index photos to make sure your irrigation happens throughout the orchard and that you're not sitting with an orchard that are over irrigated. Nikki Taylor is going to tell us a little bit more about irrigation just now. Make sure you cover the whole tree. Remember, stink bugs are sitting at the tops of the trees. If you cannot reach the tops, you have inaccurate spraying, you result in a lot of stink bugs left over in your orchards, a lot of damage. So this is just a practical example of how we go into the orchards and measure effective spraying. So to conclude, we have unaffordable losses in our in industry. You have to change your strategy. We have a monoculture. I need more diversity in the orchard in order to control for the stink bugs in a better way because as a re result of the diversity, the pollinators 
and your predators that are there, you have lower stink bug numbers to start off with. When you have high stink bug numbers, you have to test if your control was effective after every application. I always ask whether the numbers that you are finding before uh, spraying equals the numbers that you are finding when you have sprayed. So if your scout numbers and your spray numbers don't match, something went wrong. Then in terms of resistance, you combat resistance by alternating between IRAC groupings. If you do calendar sprays, beware you might miss something. Identify the sources of your infestations and scout, scout continuously. If you're not able to hit the target, prune. Prune to rejuvenate your trees and result in higher crops. There are five things that I'm just thinking about that can increase, increase crop. Okay. That is climate. If climate is against you, we've seen it all, you have less nuts. If you have less nuts, you have relatively more damage. The second thing is cultivars. Cultivar susceptibility and cultivar susceptibility to climate as well is really important. So plant the right cultivar from the start. Then we've got water. Irrigate your macadamias optimally. Nutrition is really important for macadamias. If that macadamia don't have a good mulch, a place where they can really put their feeder roots and, and get some nutrients out of the soil, you're going downhill slowly. And then you've got pest and disease. And we're making pest and disease small. But pest and disease are an effect of all four of these that I've mentioned. Climate, crop, nutrition, and water stress. Finally, repercussion pests. Repercussion pests is a result many, many times due to overspraying and inaccurate use of spray and also when we are, when we are not alternating between the IRAC groups. So what do you have to do? What do you have to do to have less stink bug pressure? You have to increase your yield. Look at cultivars, look at pruning. Manage your water and your tree nutrition. Scout, know your enemy, use the scouting guides. Control when you control. Make sure that stink bugs are under control when you walk away and move to the next orchard. And measure, measure your success. You are successful, I'm proud of all of you, and it's great to be part of a farming community that is growing so strong. Thank you.